Hello everybody and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. Today's snapshot is 13W37A and this one will probably be remembered as the portal update. That's right, you can now make portals of different sizes and I think this is a feature that no one is going to be complaining about. This is absolutely amazing. So this is the largest portal that you can make right here. It is 23 blocks by 23 blocks and that is the biggest size that you can make. Now the smallest size is still the traditional 2x3 size over here and you can make any size in between that and this one here so you can never go wider than 23 blocks or taller than 23 but anything in between that that is a rectangular or square shape you can now make into a portal. So as well as that there's been one other minor adjustment to it you can now actually create the portal by lighting the side of the block or one of the blocks at the top whereas previously you could only light them from the bottom but that is a very cool new feature and there are a bunch more as well so let's head away from these portals and go over there and check them out. So the rest of the features in this week's snapshot are all to do with command blocks. Now some of these are really exciting. The first one that I'm going to show you though isn't quite as interesting. It is to do with the syntax and block IDs. Now normally you would type in the block ID number. For, so for stone that is 1. But here you can see we can now type Minecraft stone. And then 1 at the end is the quantity. And that will give us a block of stone. Now as well as this we can also just type stone. And that will work as well. And so it's been speculated that this is possibly going to be for mod support so you can specify that it's the Minecraft game or if you've got a mod installed as well you could possibly specify the name of the mod and then the block that you want from that mod right there so that's a bit of thinking ahead now the regular block ID still works so you can still type one instead of stone but it's been said that at some point it is going to cross over and you're no longer going to be able to type in the block ID so this next new feature is really exciting it is a new command called set block and guess what it does? It puts a block into the world. So when I press this button, you can see we now have a block of stone. That is absolutely amazing. Think of all the things that you can do with that right there. Now these commands, they work with comparators and an output. So you can see it was successful in placing a block. Now if it tries and place a block where already one of that same type is, it's not going to be successful. So the output will go off, which is pretty cool. So there's a lot of things you can do with that right there involving redstone as well. Now the set block command, it has place it has destroy and it has replace as well. So let's go with destroy, you'll see that I'll actually remove the block that was there previously, it will give us a drop and replace it with the one that we have specified. So this time it's going to remove the grass which means we get a block of dirt like that which has gone derping around the place. And we also have one here which is replace. Now when I hit this right here you can see it replaced the grass block with stone and if we try and do that again because there's already a stone block there it's going to be unsuccessful and you can see that the output turns off. Now this last one is to do with the tag data that you can attach to the block so the way this command works is we have the set block bit at the beginning then we have the coordinates now I've gone with relative coordinates here you can put in actual coordinates as well then we have the block ID the data value of that block and then the placement method which you can use place, replace and destroy and then last of all you can put some data tag as well which is what we have here. So you can see that the block ID is 54 which is the chest and then we have the items in the chest we specify that we have diamonds which is 264 and then the count of those is 5 so that chest that it's going to create <laughs> which I haven't actually done yet, let's do that, will have 5 diamonds inside of it. So to go alongside the set block command is the test for block command and can you guess what that does? It's going to look for a block in the location that we specify. Now this one is looking for stone and both of these are hooked up to comparator clocks. So let's go and place some stone over there and you'll see that the output turns on which is pretty cool. Now this one is looking for a chest with diamonds in it and if we go and place that down you'll see that the output won't turn on. Now if we have a look at the data tag on this one we've got the chest and then we have items ID 264 and the count is 5 and over here we have the same thing as well and you'll notice that there's the number 3 here that is the damage value if I just change that back to 0 you'll see that we get an error message at the bottom saying it had a data value of 3 so I'm not sure what's going on here this could be a bug or I could be doing something wrong but supposedly we should be able to look for chests that have certain quantities of items in them as well so these next changes are to do with the chat system and they are very powerful this first one is really interesting it's called tell raw so when I press the button here, it's going to say, hey you, want some free diamonds? Click here. Now I can actually click on the text where it says click here and it will give me some diamonds. Now I think this could be a bug, but I can click on this more than once, which means I can kind of abuse it and give myself tons of diamonds. But you can see there that is a very interesting feature. Now the way that this works 
is we have a command it has a ton of stuff here that I don't even understand but basically we're telling it that we want some text that says hey you some free diamonds and then we have clickable text where it says click here and then on the event of clicking it is going to run a command which is slash give assumer 26464 so if you think about that you can make it so you have text in your chat and you click on it and it can even place blocks in your world or do things like that now this next one is to do with the give command if I give myself an item we will now actually be able to see the item in the chat so if I do it like this bear in mind this doesn't work if you use it with a command block but if you type it in like chat like that when I hover over the music here it will actually show me the details of that item which is very interesting and so last of all one final change that has been made is you can click on names so if I type test and then I click on my name it will automatically bring up the text to message Assuma directly which means I can send myself a message oh apparently I can't do that so now we're going to go through the bug fixes and unfortunately I don't have the time to show you them in the detail that I usually do but I'll explain to you what all of the bug fixes are anyway so first of all there was an issue of displaying these plants in flower pots that's now been fixed you can see all of these display just fine and also it's been tweaked so that the flowers that are one high will now only give you one die whereas the flowers that are two high will still give you two dies when you put them in a crafting bench now as well as this there was an issue with ender crystals causing um, FPS issues and lag issues like that when you had them into your world and now that's been fixed now if you don't know how to spawn one of these into the world well you just type this command right here which is slash summon ender crystal and then those represent the coordinates which is right where we are and that's how you summon one into the game so there's one very important thing that I almost forgot to add to this video and that is that structures will now be saved now structures are nether fortresses and witch huts and there was a worry that when we move into the new terrain generation that it will throw all those structures around and Mo Yang have found a way to fix this and it means that 1.6.3 will be coming out as well so in the future there will be that I have no idea when it is but it means from that point onwards when we move to 1.7 all of the structures in the worlds will be saved so the first two of these bugs are to do with game rules. If you had do mob spawning set to false, then zombie pigmen could still spawn next to nether portals. Now if you had do mob loot set to false, then all animals and mobs shouldn't drop anything. However, breeding animals would cause them to drop XP. So that's another little fix right there. Now shearing and mushroom never used to play the shearing sound, so that's been changed. And also the fawns enchantment could sometimes cause the wearer to take damage, so another little fix right there. And last of all, sometimes if you had sugarcane in the ground next to water and then you remove the water, it wouldn't update the sugarcane and it wouldn't pop out of the ground. So last of all there are two things that I missed from the previous snapshot. One of them was Podzol and mushrooms. So you can actually plant mushrooms onto Podzol in any light level. As you can see it's the middle of the day and these aren't popping out of the ground. Which is pretty cool. And also these are player skulls right here. And people have realised the potential to use them as micro blocks. So Mark from Mojang has actually created a whole bunch of accounts that has particular skins on the head of that player so that you can use them as micro building blocks and you can import them into the game using this command right here now on the minecraft wiki there is a list of different names that you can put here for example let's type golem and then we can place down an iron golem head like that so if you're interested in those there'll be a link in the description box to the minecraft wiki and then you can add micro blocks to your world as well so that is it for this snapshot video. If it wasn't up to its usual standards, then I do apologize. I don't know what is with me today. I had a hard time recording this video and sometimes that just happens, but I'm done now, it's finished, and I hope you guys do enjoy it. So as always, thank you very much for watching and I will catch you next time.